Greetings fellow guitar travellers, it's Rowan J Parker here, back with another episode of Music Theory. And on today's lesson we're going to look at the circle, or the cycle of fifths, or you can call it the cycle of fifths and fourths, or the circle of fifths and fourths, but I'm just going to call it the circle of fifths, like most sane people on the planet. Well, before we get into the lesson, I'd like to encourage you to visit my website, www.rowanjparker.com. It's a great site with a ton of free resources on it and a store you can buy things. You can buy my wares if you like. You can get my Rockstar course on that site and a whole bunch of other books as well, videos, a ton of stuff, a ton of good stuff. Will I give you a bum steer? No. Right, anyway, so visit the site and if you want to hit me up for Skype lessons or anything like that, you can do that via the site as well. Okay, so last couple of lessons we've been looking at scales and now we're going to tackle the circle of fifths. Now you've learned all 12 major scales, of course. Now you're thorough experts in the field of knowing what notes are in what scales. We're going to put them all in the circle of fifths. And for that, and you can do this with me, I feel like I'm leading an art class here. You're going to need a piece of paper, the paper of oblivion, and you need the pen of destiny. And also, you'll need to draw a circle. Now, apparently Leonardo da Vinci could draw a perfect freehand circle. The difference between Leonardo da Vinci and myself is that uh, he was a genius and I'm a retard. Oh, oh, you can't say the word retard, it's not politically correct. Oh. Nevertheless, yeah, I'm a retard. So, um, you're going to need for this something to draw a circle with. And if you've not got Leonardo da Vinci levels of freehand circle drawing goodness, you will require something round, like a CD. So that's what I'm going to use, all right? Okay, so grab your pen, grab your paper, grab your compass, protractor, CD, or your genius artwork. I need to draw a circle. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Grab the CD and draw around it and we'll get a circle. Now, circle of fifths is like a clock because a clock has 12 points and so does a circle of fifths, which kind of makes sense because there are 12 keys, right? So you draw the points on the clock on your circle just like you would on a clock, right? So it's like each point is like an hour on the clock, I guess. So you should end up with something that looks a bit like that. Circle with 12 points. Now, the difference between the circle of fifths and a regular clock is the circle of fifths can turn in two directions. It can turn clockwise. If it turns clockwise, that's called the dominant direction. Dominant. And you're going to add sharps. But it can also turn anti-clockwise in what's called the subdominant direction, in which case, you're going to add flats. Okay. Now, at the 12 o'clock position on the circle of fifths, which is zero sharps and zero flats, we have the scale of C major, right? Which is, as you should know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, that's C major. Okay, so now we're going to advance around the circle of fifths clockwise, adding an additional sharp at each point, okay? So that's the way it's gonna work. So what scale contains one sharp? And I know you're going to all cry out, oh, that would be G major, and you'd be right, it's G major. G major contains G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. One sharp is the F sharp. Okay, so we have our one sharp, G major. And now we're going to go around to the next key, which is D major. It's D major, two sharps. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D two sharps, okay? And then, anyone like to enlighten me as to what three sharps would be? Three sharps is, it's A, A major. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A for A major. All right, hope you're keeping up with the little drawing here, should look fabby at the end. And then the next one, four sharps. Four sharps would be E major. Very popular E major, right? So E major is E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E, okay. Cracking on now, we're going to go to five sharps. That's a lot of sharps. It's as sharp as a drawer of knives. All right, B major. Now B major, five sharps, is B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. Okay, and then at the bottom, at the six o'clock position on the circle of fifths, we've got F sharp. Now F sharp is, yes, it's a lot of sharps. It's six sharps. It's as sharp as two drawers of knives. 
is F sharp, G sharp, <laughs> F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E sharp. Yes, the weirdly spelled E sharp. It is E sharp. I know you think it should be F, but it's not. It's E sharp in this key. All right, so now we've got the clockwise portion of the circle of fifths complete hurrah for us. Let's do the anti-clockwise bit now. So this time we're going to be adding flats. So what scale contains no flats? Well, the answer is pretty obviously the same as a scale that contains no sharps, i.e. C major, right? So we know that. So what scale contains one flat? Well, one flat would be F major. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and F. F major. Fabayor. All right. And now, two flats. Two flats is... B flat. B flat major. All right, so it's B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, and B flat. Now we're on to three flats which is E flat. E flat being E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, and E flat. And then four flats. Four flats says A flat major, A flat major. A flat is A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, and A flat. And then we're almost there now. D flat, five flats, there's a whole block of flats. Did that joke the last time and it's not improved since then. D flat major is D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, and C. And then we can go around to six flats. Now the interesting thing is when you go to six flats, you'll notice it overlaps with six sharps because the scale of F sharp major and the scale of G flat major are in fact the same scale, they're just expressed differently. So if you express it with flats, it's G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F and G flat. So yes, there is a C flat in the scale of G flat. All right, now this spelling of F sharp major and G flat major is described as enharmonic because one is expressed all with sharps and one is expressed all with flats, but they're not two different scales, at least not in tempered tuning, which is what we all use on guitar. So that's it. Now we can do one more thing. Now we've got our extremely elegant circle of fifths. We can add in what's called the relative minors. Now to calculate relative minor, what you need to do is go to the sixth degree of the major scale and that becomes the root of the relative minor. I'll say that one more time because it's important. To find the relative minor scale of any major key or major scale, go to the sixth degree of the major scale that becomes the root of the relative minor. So for instance, in C major, C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Let's count six notes up. C, D, E, F, G, A is a relative minor. You kind of knew that, I'm sure. A minor is relative to C major. So inside the circle, we can put in the relative minor scales as well. So let's just zip through these. So we've got A minor, which is relative to C major. What about G major? What's relative to that? Relative minor, mm, E minor, D major, that'll be B minor. A major, that'll be F sharp minor. If you're not convinced here, just go back to the notes and the scales and calculate for them for yourselves. But trust me, Trust me, I'm a doctor. Would I lie to you? These are the relative minors. So B major is G sharp minor, and then F sharp major is D sharp minor. And let's go around anti-clockwise flat keys. We've got D minor for F major, and then G minor, C minor, F minor, B flat minor, and then E flat minor. All righty, and there's our circle of fifths. Complete, completio. Beautiful, isn't it? So we get the camera to focus on it. Yes. Okay. So that's how it, that's how it goes. And uh, what you need to do is just keep writing this out until you've committed it all to memory, and uh, you've got it as uh, fluently down as uh, the knowledge of what notes from what scales. Um, other than just writing this out several times to help you, here's a piece of uh, advice for all you guys out there trying to learn this stuff. You'll find that if you take this material and you try and teach it to someone else, that's one of the best ways of learning it. The reason that my knowledge of this stuff is so solid is because I teach it all the time. And so therefore, not only am I taking the knowledge I already have and teaching it, I'm continually re-engraving the pattern in my mind every time I teach it. So it becomes very, very easy and you can just spew this stuff out like a volcano of music theory. Impress all your friends, win friends and influence people by knowing what notes are in G flat major. Anyway, that'll do for this video, Circle of Fifths, hope you enjoyed that, 
and I'll see you next time for another music theory video. In the meantime, don't forget to check out the website and I'll see you next time. So until then, it's been Ryan J. Parker signing off. Farewell. <laughs>